Hello there everyone, welcome back to Cosplay Cartographer. This is episode 4, very excited to give you all this update. So Sunshot, at the time of me recording this, is coming along great. I'm very happy with my progress considering this is my first time tackling everything that we're going to go over in this video. But like I said, the main tackle for this is to actually get progress done and not just have the printer complete print after print after print because it's all done and now I'm actually doing something with all the prints. But yeah, all the prints have been completed at the point in me recording this. My printer was down for quite a bit and my friend Pip Ninja Armory links to all the socials down in the description below. Help me because we have the same exact printer. So he literally went, boop, here's my print head. Let's trade. So I gave him my print head that he's gonna fix and he gave me his print head, which does fix. So I just put a steel nozzle on there. Also 0.4 millimeter, same as the brass one I had previously, and it's working great. So with all that out of the way, let's jump into Cosplay Cartographer episode four. So before I started printing, I went ahead and sprayed my pieces with a two-in-one filler and sandable primer. So I went with the Rust Oleum, I believe is how you pronounce it, primer. All right, so all my prints are done. Thankfully, we are going to spray it with the two-in-one filler primer. I already did spray a few pieces and uh, as like a test. So we're gonna go ahead and spray the rest right now. I got gloves on, gonna be wearing some safety glasses and a mask because breathing that stuff in, it's not the best for you. And I don't feel like getting it in my eyes either. So it's one thing to look like a goofball, it's another to be permanently blinded. So, oh my God, instantly fogging up. Well, I guess cue the time lapse. For those of you wondering, I am doing this in a very vented area uh, outside of my balcony in the day of light so I can see where I'm spraying and where the wind's going so I make sure I'm not spraying on anything else. So something to keep in mind. Also, I no longer have visibility, so please, that's good. Last piece. I think, I can't really see. So my phone ran out of storage as soon as I finished, fun so I had to quickly delete some videos and whatnot. Uh, so everything's been sprayed. I will show that in just a moment. It doesn't need to be perfect because we're gonna spray it again, do a second coat and sand it after with the fact. Uh, I have my friend Pip Ninja Armory helping me through the process. So big shout out to him. And this is what it looks like as of right now. So these are all the sprayed parts. Again, doesn't need to be perfect because this is just the first pass as long as we get most of it. Uh, I couldn't see that well because the goggles were fogging up. But again, I'd rather, you know, have fogged up vision than be permanently blinded from this stuff. I'm very excited to put these two pieces together, uh, the mag right there. I've already put some of these uh, uh, together without the super glue, obviously, and it seems to fit nicely. The tolerances are perfect, so very excited to let this sit for 24 hours and sand it. That's about it for this portion of the video. Gonna wait for this to cure in about 24 hours, come out here, sand it with a higher grit, then go, sorry, a lower grit, then a second pass, we'll do a higher grit. So, so just learning this for the first time, Again, I have Pit Ninja Armory helping me out. So it's really weird video format, but it's very crucial when you're working with things like this to do it in a well-ventilated area for your own personal health. Do not cheap out on that. And even if you know it's a little bit uncomfortable and unrecreational for a video format, it's something that has to be done. Risking your health is not worth it. So super excited to jump into this and I'll see you all in about 24 hours. 24 hours later. All right, this is all 20 something pieces of Sunshot. They're all sprayed. Let's get started. So what we're gonna be using today is 120 grit sandpaper. So the objective here is to just eliminate all of the white filler primer or silver uh, filler primer we used here. Just try to get as much of that silver out as possible. All the little details inside of like those lines and whatnot, we're not too worried about because the layer lines aren't visible and also it's gonna get painted over anyways. So we're gonna cut up some pieces of 120 grit, sand those pieces and we'll move on to the next step. So for those who don't know, which I didn't know until recently, the higher the grit, the tougher the material. We're gonna start with the small pieces. I don't even know why I bothered spraying these, but I just did out of habit. I was already doing it. So it's not an exact science, it's a good enough science. So let's jump in. So I think I decided now that I sanded down a little bit, uh, still a lot of primer on there. This 
piece isn't really gonna be visible anyway, so I'm just gonna focus my attention on the pieces that will be visible. So we're gonna move on to the bigger pieces, which is what I should have done in the first place. Something like the trigger will be visible, so I will sand this little piece. And that leads us to the present. So what my current status is, I have these parts that have been super glued and they came out very, very nicely. I don't know why I was stroking it like that, but it just feels super nice. Ha! <laughs> Gay! So I've got these parts super glued together. I kind of did mess up a little bit and broke this piece. It's about to pop off, but if it does, I have super glue I can throw back on there. And I've super glued this piece, which I also slightly off-centered, but it's very noticeable. What I'm gonna do is these little seams are in between each part. Let me see if I can rotate it. There we go. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put Bondo there to make it look seamless. Same with like the seams right here, just to make it look like there was never, you know, there was nothing there to begin with. And as well as right here, these two parts that were glued together. So let's jump in. Gonna be using this Bondo. So I got my gloves and paper towels ready to go. Let's jump in. Gonna start with this piece for now. Don't smell Bondo. Why did I do that? I'm not too worried about making a mess because it's all gonna get sanded and painted over anyways. This is the final result, and if it looks like I have no idea what I'm doing, it's because I don't. Piece two. I just kind of dabbed it all around, and now I'm gonna use my fingers to actually spread it. God, that's just... Part two complete, and I don't care if it gets a little messy around here because I like the idea of, you know, maybe the vents clogging up a little bit. So I kind of having fun playing around with that idea. Now we get to the chonky boy, the, the big, the big main event here. Now we've got the entire steam bondoed up. I'm gonna sand it all off after it's done drying. That's it for bondo. So what I'm gonna do is let these pieces dry, go ahead and respray them and then resand them. So I, I go live sometimes on TikTok just showing the process, but I don't think I need to show you all exactly the same thing over and over again. It's very repetitive and boring from a viewer standpoint. 24 hours later. All right, everybody, here are the finished sanded pieces of Sunshot. We're about to add the initial black layer of paint on these pieces. Very excited. I will update you all when it is completed. So now all the parts have that initial black layer just to give it a nice base, and we can proceed with the actual painting process and detail work. So at this point in the process, I was just live streaming me painting all this on TikTok. I don't think I need to include it in this video just because I'm pretty sure it's self-explanatory what painting is. You're literally just putting color on something. So I didn't think that you guys really cared to see that. But I did get a metallic gold paint for that bottom piece you see. I went ahead and put some of those assemblies together just so I have an idea of how it's all going to look and fit. Obviously, it all looks very rough. You can definitely see where some of the white portions are meeting in to the black portions, but that's totally okay. It's just our first layer. The pictures don't really show all the imperfections and there were a lot at this time. So I went ahead and let this dry for about an hour, I believe, then went back, did another coat, and this is how it turned out. Here's an example of me going over again with another coat. I used some masking tape to get those edges really defined. And as you can see on the left, that seam between those two parts in the mag is almost non-existent. I'm very happy with how that turned out and I am excited to put it all together. So here are the other pieces that I went ahead and did another layer on, super glued some more parts together. And I went ahead and added a little bit of scorch marks using a mixture of purple paint and black paint along those gold detail pieces is right there obviously it doesn't look incredible but i don't have an airbrush so i just kind of worked with what i had all of the layer lines pretty much look non-existent which makes me extremely happy with this final product almost final product i should say so here is the entire top assembly of sunshot you can see a lot of super glue on that right piece right there that i I had such a hard time putting together, but I kind of figured out. We got the vents on there, fixed up some of the scorch marks, and just added some white paint. By adding white paint, I mean I accidentally spilled it, but it's okay. So now we see that the bottom half and upper half assemblies have been put together, and it looks incredible. I'm so excited to weather this and give it that final touch. And without further ado, let's finish Sunshot. 
All right, everyone, this is the completely weathered sun shot with poor lighting. Uh, how I did it, I took an oil-based gold Sharpie and basically shook it, pressed it down a lot, grabbed a paintbrush, dabbed it, and cleared off the excess, and basically did quick motions just like this to get those shinier bits. It's kind of hard to tell on a foam. Same thing with the non-gold parts, but with this uh, silver Craftsmart pen, and went over these little details to get like, uh, like that shininess to show the wear and tear or all those silver, you know, like metallic chips. So that's how I did that. Same with all along here. Now the dirtiness, the griminess, how I got it all in those lines, what I did, I got some paint water with a mixture of black acrylic paint, brown acrylic paint, and white acrylic paint. Mix it all in here to get a milky consistency. You can kind of tell if the consistency is correct by seeing how it slowly drips off those walls right there of the jar and just quickly coated everything. And once it was all like slabbed and covered in that liquidy material, uh, I got a paper towel, as you can see here, and just dabbed it. You don't wipe it, you dab it. And my bud Pit Ninja Armory taught me all of it. I wanted to do this with his guidance first, which is why I didn't record a, you know, process as I was doing it. So this is kind of a full look of that. Very, very happy with how this turned out. So here's a much better look at Sunshot in better lighting. I'm very incredibly pleased with how this turned out. I know it's not the best looking prop. I know it's not the coolest looking thing someone's made, but I'm extremely proud of it considering it's my first time tackling a project like this and I am far more comfortable proceeding with my actual cosplay going forward. It was just really nice to get a feel for the process on a smaller scale rather than diving feet first into a much larger world of cosplay. So again, huge thank you to Papa Bear, Pit Ninja Armory, and everyone over at the 405th who guided me and really propelled me to start this 3D printing cosplay stuff because it's something I'm very passionate about and I just want to share my journey along the way. I want to map it out and be able to show you all how I do it and maybe it'll inspire someone else to pick something like this up. So that brings us today, many days, maybe a week now in the future from what you all saw last. So Sunshot was always a gift for my brother, so it's no longer in my possession. I wish I recorded a segment with me holding it. I am so mad I didn't, but it's not even with me right now. I am working on my next project, which will be a very fun surprise for Cosplay Cartographer Episode 5. Cannot wait to show what that is. You might already know if you love Halo. So uh, yeah, I hope that turns out. There was already a layer shift, so I'm not very happy about that considering it's been a five day long print. So I love that it wants to do a layer shift right at the end of day four, because we all know that's gonna happen. Thank you all so much for watching Cosplay Cartographer Episode 4. I hope you learned something or at least had some enjoyment watching me make Sunshot. It was such a cool experience and I'm really excited to jump in going forward and I will catch you all in the next one. Subscribe to Zang Helios for some more uh, freaking believable